frequently when you see a chart that has some economic data on it, you will see these shaded areas like you see here in this graph of uh, consumer price index. Usually when we're talking about economic data, the shaded areas are used to represent periods for which there is an official recession, and they provide uh, nice information to go along with whatever the data it is that you're looking at. So like here you can see uh, in the Great Recession of 2008, um, we had this recession shading, but you'll also know, look what, notice, look what happens to the price level as consumption starts to drop. So shading recession areas provides additional information on the graph without being too obtrusive and taking away from the data set that you wish to uh, convey. So I want to show you how we did this. I'm going to pull up this previous chart I did for CPI. Um, this is the Consumer Price Index for All Urban Consumers that is managed by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put a shaded area in here. The first thing we need to know is what are the time periods for which there was a recession? You can get recession data from nber.org. I personally prefer to get data uh, in its most packaged format already, so I tend to go and look at the FRED database in St. Louis before I go to any of the primary sites to see if they have data that I want that's already packaged in a format that I want. And then I check it against the original source to see if it's up to date, because sometimes the FRED database isn't as up to date as we would like. So let's do that. I'm going to pull up uh, Safari here. I'm using a Mac. And here I have done a search uh, on the FRED database for Consumer Price Index. So, uh, but I want the NBER official recession dating. So I'm going to go up here in the search dialog box and I'm going to search for recession. At the very top of the list is the data set that I want, NBER based recession indicators for the U.S. for the period following the peak through the trough. Because my CPI data is monthly, I would like to have recession information that is also monthly. Now NBER actually reports recessions quarterly because GDP data is quarterly. But the nice thing about this data set is uh, the FRED database has gone ahead and created a monthly version of it if you, uh, for you to use. And you'll notice here you see plus one or zero. Let's see what that looks like. If I click on monthly, you can see here that the data set is essentially a zero when there is no recession or a one when there is a recession. Now, I personally don't need to go all the way back to 1854, so I'm going to click in this box where it has the start date, 1854, and I'm going to uh, click there and it pulls up this nice dialog box, and if I click on the right arrows up here, it moves me forward in time. And I'm going to select a period, or approximately the last 10 years, which would begin for me in January of 2006. And this is also consistent with the data set that I have already uh, compiled for this CPI. So I go here to 2006 and I click on January. And now you'll notice that where this data is up here on the one, this represents a recession. And where it's on a zero, this represents no recession. Okay, I don't really like this particular graph, and I want to use it in uh, my data set using Excel, so I'm going to download the data rather than the graph. Now, something to note here. Look up here at the date. The final piece of data that the FRED database has collected is from August of 2014. It is now January of 2016, and so the one thing I would want to do now is go to nber.org and verify that there have not been any recessions since August of 2014. If there haven't been any recessions since August of 2014, I can augment this data set by putting zeros for every month past August of 2014 into the uh, most current month I'm interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and download the data set up to 2014. So down below the graph, you see here we have the Notes, Graph, Share, Export, Site, Tabs. If I click on Export, it gives me this option to export to Excel. I click on that. 
and it downloads into my downloads folder. I'm going to click on that. This is the third graph I've downloaded from Fred, so it just continues calling them Fred graph, and with each consecutive one I download, it adds a new number. So this is the third, so it calls it Fred graph 3. I'm going to click on that, and this will open a new Excel workbook for me. Uh, with the data from NBER. FRED calls this data set USREC. So if you wanted to go to the FRED database and access this data set directly without doing a search, you could, do, you could go to USREC. So I have two workbooks here. The first one I have has my CPI information in it. The second one is the new FRED um, NBER information I downloaded. So you'll notice in my CPI workbook, I already have these dates starting in January of 06, and I have the percentage change in CPI that I've calculated that's in this chart. So I'm going to go over here to my recession workbook, and I'm going to copy the data. So I'm going to start in January of 2006. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the data set, and I'm going to right click and click copy. And I'm going to go over here in my CPI workbook and over in a new column, I'm going, because I know my first data point is January of 06, I'm going to click on that cell and I'm going to paste. So I'm going to right click then and select paste. And you'll notice now it creates this column where I have the zeros and ones. Here are my ones in 2008 when the recession was going on. And sadly, because it's not the most up-to-date data set, the data ends here in September 14. Now, I personally know there has not been a recession since then, so I'm going to just enter zeros in the remaining cells. So I'm going to grab the last zero, and I'm just going to copy this down so it's zeros in all the cells. So now I have one workbook that has my CPI and recession data in one place, and I can use that now to add the recession shading to my graph. Before I do that, I'm going to click on just above my first recession data point and add a heading to this so that when I look at this later, I know what this is. This I'm going to call recession. What I want to do is I want to create one scale for the recession data and one scale for the CPI. So how I do that is if I have my um, chart selected, there are a couple ways I can do it. I can go up to the tab that says chart design and I can click Select Data. Now, if you're familiar with right-clicking, as I am, I've been using right-clicking for years, it's uh, somewhat of a shortcut for me to do that. You can also right-click on the chart and go down and select Select Data. So either way will work. So I'm going to click Select Data. And you'll notice here that I have one series. And it's not even uh, very helpful. It's called Series 1. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this Series 1. Um, this is my CPI data. So I'm going to click on the name box here, and I'm going to call this CPI-U. Now I have that CPI-U series. I'm going to go here and add another series. So I'm going to click on this little plus below this Legend Entries box. And it gives me a new series called Series 2. I'm going to go to the name box again, and I'm going to call this Recession. So it has a meaningful name. And then I'm going to go on this Y values box and click on this little icon inside the box. That allows me to select the data. Because my percent change in CPI data begins in February of 06, I'm going to select my first recession data point as February of 06. And then I'm going to drag all the way down to the bottom to pick up the last data point. And once I have it all selected, I hit the Enter key or the Return key. And it, if you click on the recession, you'll notice now those Y values are there. So now I click OK. And oh no, what's happened to my chart? It basically just messed it up because Excel is trying to figure out what this 0 and 1 means with respect to the axis uh, uh, formatting that we already have. So what I want to do is I want to put my new information on a secondary axis. So if I highlight, so this orange thing 
this orange line that goes up and down, this is my new recession data. So if I click anywhere on that, you'll notice it selects all these points. Now if I right click, click on Format Data Series, and you'll notice it pulls up this nice inspector box on the right side. It has these tabs, a paint bucket, something that looks like a little pentagon with a shadow, and this little thing that looks like a bar chart. So the first thing I want to do is, it says here, Plot Series On on the Bar Chart tab. I want to click on Secondary Axis. And now you'll notice my CPI data goes back to normal, but my shading information is not very well laid out. How do I fix that? This is not a shaded area at all, like the one that I showed you in the other chart. The main reason for that is that Excel assumed that we wanted this to be a line chart. So we want our CPI to be a line chart, but our recession shading information, we actually want this to be a bar chart. So on the Chart Design tab up here, go over here to where it says Change Chart Type and click on that and tell it you want this to be a column or a clustered column, which is the first one in this box. So we'll go to Column, then Clustered Column. And now it's starting to look a little more like what I want it to look like. So if I click anywhere in this uh, new clustered column, now my inspector over here in the Format Data Series adds these two new, these two new sliders, Series Overlap, which we're going to ignore, and Gap Width, which you're going to use. So Gap Width means the width between the lines and the, or the bars. Okay? We want the gap for these to be zero. While orange is a nice color, it totally distracts from the CPI data. So I want to change the color of this um, shading. So I'm going to go over here to my inspector on the right and click on the paint bucket. Inside the paint bucket, you will notice uh, we have an option for border, which I'm not going to look at, and up, up above border we have fill. And Excel assigns some automatic color. It thinks orange is nice, but it doesn't work well for us. So if I click on the paint bucket color here, uh, I can now change that to gray, and I'm going to select maybe the second gray from the top, and that looks pretty nice, but not really. I still, the, you know, the, the, the shading goes down here, but doesn't go all the way to the top, so there's something else I need to do. You'll notice that there's an axis label over here on the right, and it goes 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and there's where I see the problem. So if I click on any one of those numbers, it gives me this box around the, the axis uh, labeling. So when I click on that, it changes my inspector over here to Format Axis. You see Axis Options is selected. I go over here to the Column tab again, and here's my issue. You see Bounds Minimum is 0, Maximum is 1.2. I click on the Maximum box, and I change that to a 1. And now my shading looks correct. Okay, so there's one last detail I want to, to fix, and that is if we look at our chart, it still has this axis of zeros and ones over here, which only distracts from what we're trying to show and uh, actually doesn't mean anything anyway. So if I click on that again on the inspector, now it says Format Axis, Highlight Axis Options, click on the bar tab. So you'll notice we have access options here. I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to go down to labels. Click on that. See it says label position. This is telling you where you want to position the access label. Right now it's next to access. I click on that and I select none and it gets rid of the access label altogether. So now I have created the chart that I showed at the beginning of the video. And the nice thing about this shading technique is you can do this with any type of economic data you want to. You don't just have to do it with CPI. You can do it with um, other labor force information. You can do it with unemployment rates or growth rates in GDP. Any sort of economic data for which you want to show when the recessions occur, you can use this same shading technique.